Hello and good evening. Thank you so much for being here tonight. My name is Dennis Goulet. I'm a Canadian Features Programmer here at TIFF, and it is my pleasure to welcome you all to the world premiere of Splinters by Tom Fitzgerald. Uh, to begin with, I'd like to acknowledge that we are on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of New Credit and the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe Haudenosaunee here on Wendat, and we're grateful to work and live in this community. Um, I would also, thank you. The film is eligible for the Canada Goose Award for Best Canadian Feature Film and the Girls People's Choice Award, and you can vote for your favorite films at tiff.net slash vote. Um, we would like to thank Emotion Pictures for providing us with the film, and it is my pleasure to welcome acclaimed director Tom Fitzgerald back to TIFF with his latest. Thank you. Um, Tom crafts an exceptional and unique coming home story where the spirit of Nova Scotia um, really radiates off the screen. At every turn, he resists making anything too simple. Identity is not static. Small town mores constrict, but they also evolve. And certainly, mother-daughter relationships are messy and yet so deeply entwined. This film is anchored by incredible performances by two headstrong women at odds and brilliantly portrayed by Sophia Banzoff and Shelley Thompson. And thank you, Tom, for being here. It is a great pleasure to be here, and thank you all so much for coming out tonight. Coming out is actually our theme tonight. <laughs> I never know what to say before a movie, but we're gonna be here afterwards to have a conversation and talk about whatever you want to. But I wanna introduce the cast who have all flown in today. Um, we have uh, from Nova Scotia, Callum Dunphy. Hi. And <laughs> Bailey Mon. Bailey. Hi. I don't know if Headstrong was a stretch. We've got Shelly Thompson and Woo! Sophia Bonza. This uh, is actually my first time working with an all Atlantic Canadian cast. Everybody has roots there. And I have to say, I've, I've never worked with a better ensemble. So I'm sure you'll want to talk to them afterwards. Also very special. We have our playwright here tonight from Nova Scotia, Leanne Poole. <laughs> who is really the mind and heart and talent behind the whole story. So thank you, Leanne. All right. I hope you like it. If you don't, it's all right. We can still talk. And I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. And the wonderful cast, Bailey Mon, Callum Dunphy, Shelley Thompson, and Sophia Bonzoff. Everyone's favorite lesbian, Jill Anderson, you're here too, right? Come on up. She played a lesbian. I'm sorry, I should clarify. And Leanne, come on up, Leanne. Leanne Poole, our playwrights. <laughs> Thank you. Does anyone have a question? I actually would like to start I off with a question. I recognize Dennis with a question. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Um, so one of the things that was so striking about the film when we watched it is that it sort of subverts a very classic coming out story. I mean, Sophia's character is already out, and in fact, she's trying to keep her boyfriend a secret. What about that was um, you know compelling for you or resonated with you? I saw the play in 2010, and to me, I... I absolutely felt the 
immediacy and truth in the idea of sexuality being a moving fluid identity and not something that's fixed. And I also really recognized the generational gap with Nancy, who, you know, worked hard to come to terms with her fixed idea of her daughter's sexuality and then found herself having to cope all over again. All of that was felt very forward thinking to me. And over the last eight years or so, I think it's become a very mainstream thinking about sexuality. But Leanne, you could answer that. <laughs> I feel as though I forget the question. <laughs> <laughs> it was about coming out as not a lesbian, I guess. Mm. Yep. You can touch it. I can touch it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I uh, wrote the stage play from a very personal place, um, and I had, when I was younger, come out to my mother as a lesbian. I didn't really have much other language than that, and neither did she. Um, and I feel like often you, you write things um, while you are or before you are ready to learn the lessons. And from the first draft of the play uh I then got to feel um I then dated a cis man and I got to feel how so happy she was um and how guilty it made me feel to feel relieved that I had made her happy you know um so I thought it was just very uh uh I, I thought the the thought of keeping that a secret would be pretty funny there you and have it and do you feel as though, um, you know, fluidity is becoming more and more acceptable in a sense or, you know, not having to stay with one identity? Yeah. I, yeah. More and more acceptable. <laughs> you make movies about it now. <laughs> you make movies about it now. Um, I mean, I feel like my uh, sexuality is uh, I is pretty f fluid. Um and that you make movies about it now. <laughs> Once the movie's out, I mean. It's a work of fiction, people. Are there questions out there? There are no questions too foolish. Oh. Hi. Oh, I recognize the lady in beige. Okay, I'm going to repeat the question so everyone can hear. The question was, it felt like quite a long time in the beginning of the movie where there was no dialogue, and how long did people go before anyone spoke? <laughs> in, the, in the screen time, uh, uh, well, Sophia has a little bit on the bus before her phone cacks out, and she does say, I don't want to do this alone. <laughs> and then it's 10 minutes. And we shot for a whole week with Sophia dragging that yellow suitcase across Nova Scotia. The shoot was three weeks, and that was one week, just walking <laughs> through hills. That is almost true. I'm sure it felt that way. Hashtag mad skills. Um, <laughs> any other questions? It's a metaphor about baggage. Get it? <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Uh, was it shot in Kings County? Does anyone know? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it, was, it was shot actually right on the edge of Kings County and Hans County. So it was shot just, you obviously know Nova Scotia. Okay. So it was just by Falmouth, but then we got some great. Okay. We shot on Falmouth Dyke Road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I didn't put that in. That's the truth. There are many dike roads in Halifax. So, you know, if you're interested, go there. Questions right here. So the comment was the majority of the cast were quite young, to which Shelley responded, thanks. No offense. 
I'm taken. <laughs> So the question is, um, Tom has worked with Olympia Dukakis, Brenda Fricker, and um, the question is around, do you direct younger people any differently than you do when you're working with, you know, veterans like Olympia Dukakis? I would say it's not so much a matter of age as experience and the kind of experience actors bring to it, because I've also done films where I was mixing sort of Oscar winners and people who had never acted at all before. Uh, it's films like Three Needles, there was a lot of people who, some of them had never seen a movie. So you sort of take a completely different approach. Every actor, regardless of experience, you, you have to figure out how to communicate with them. And everybody has a different idea of what words mean. And you can sit on a set and I can talk about how I would like more depth. And Shelley will think that means a bit more emotion and the cinematographer will think, more focus. <laughs> and the costume designer will think, the brim of the hat. <laughs> so everyone has their own way of hearing. And I think whether they're experienced or not, it's, a, it's, it's an ensemble effort, but it's also one-on-one -on -one that way, sort of trying to learn a language as we go. Good question. Right here. So can you talk about, yeah, the development of the characters, how you wrote it, um, because the characters were really, you know, everyone had a different role to play and had their own journeys in the film and, you know, developed as you learned more about them. I personally feel, I, I'm from a big Irish family, so we die a lot. And, <laughs> you know, it's not a wedding or a funeral if there's not a fist fight, right? And when people pass is actually when I learn the most about them. I could wonder for years and years, but it's, it's people are willing to speak when, when there's a loss and, and an empty space. And I'm sure Sophia has an excellent answer to this question too. Well, I mean, the script was so well written that, you know, it's so nuanced and so honest and brutally honest that you know coming i i felt like the just like in real life you know people are very complex people change and that's what i loved about the script so much and it doesn't uh conclude in this perfect way you know we're 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 leaving these characters as they're changing there there's no bow around it so i mean that's to me that's just like life Nancy's the keeper of secrets, really. Hi. Uh, a question for you. Uh, I'm not into how some of you were like, sort of in the last film. And one point where it looks like the brother might actually get to die. I'm wondering if that was a specific possibility. I want to know more about that in the film. So there's a lot that happens around that kitchen table. And there's a moment where it looks like the brother is going to deck the guy. <laughs> Right. So was that a consideration? Who wants to take this one? I think, you know, Bailey probably did want to deck Callum a lot, and that probably just showed through. Are we talking about Callum? Are we, talk are we talking about the boyfriend or oh, the friend guy. of the, like, the two guys? Yeah. I don't think we ever considered me hitting the guy. I don't... <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be against it. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, Alistair, who played that part made it all the way to the final callbacks for his part. So that shit was real. <laughs> also, also, the uh, the play was actually entirely set in the kitchen, which I think is interesting. 
but also those of you who've been to the Maritimes probably know that, and I don't think it's unique actually in the Marit uh, to the Maritimes, but that it seems that the most profound things happen in the kitchen. You know, you, you gather at meals and you dissect and you, you know, certainly in the Maritimes it's, and as an Irish tradition, it's, it's very, very present. And the music, like. It's always a son yeah. of a bitch with a guitar. <laughs> All right, you got to tell us a little bit more about the music. Well, Stuart Legier is our, I called him Hoke in the script. No one ever said his name. But uh, yeah. he is one of Halifax's greatest. And opening next week for uh, Wainwright. Ru Rufus Wainwright. Thank you. Not Loudon. Loudon Wainwright. No. No, 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 no. I see your point. Um, <laughs> So, uh, actually, Stuart was the original Rob on stage. And uh, I, I knew everybody would end up in the kitchen. I knew everybody would sing, because that's what happens in Nova Scotia. And I, I just thought it was a great full circle to have Stuart come around and be that annoying guy with the guitar. <laughs> and he wrote eight beautiful songs for the film. So... Hi. So the fellow that did the harmony, does he always do it? That was mind blowing. I'll tell him you said. Um, Alistair is an actor. He's right now on stage in Halifax playing Shakespeare and Shakespeare in Love. And no, I think that was the first day they ever sang together. Yeah. Hi. So the comment is that the relationships <laughs> okay. were great between the boyfriend and girlfriend, but also especially between the brother and sister. And so the question is, you know, what work did you do um, before the filming? How did you get to know each other? The first time we met was at the script reading and she was rousing me. I messed up my hair. It was not supposed to be that short. <laughs> yeah, I made a mistake with, uh, anyway. <laughs> That's a different story. So right off the bat, like there was some brother sister chemistry there, Raz and me. Yeah. And then first day on set, this guy dressed me up in a wig, which was great. I spent three hours thinking that I had to do the full film in a wig. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so you hire a young actor, right? Yeah. Who doesn't have a lot of experience necessarily. And he thinks maybe he should give himself a haircut the weekend before you start shooting. Uh, it... <laughs> Forgets yeah. to put the guard on the razor. I had like a line, like mid, I, yeah, I just had to take it all off. That's not how genetics works. <laughs> So he called all nervous uh, to the hair makeup wardrobe department and revealed that he'd accidentally shaved his head. Yeah, yeah. And so I told them that in order for him to benefit and learn from his mistake... I did. ...that they should bring three ugly wigs to set on day one. And I made him try on all the wigs, and they sent me pictures of him in all these wigs... And I told them to choose the Beatles wig. Which was actually the best choice. The other two was Stephen Harper and Macaulay Culkin. So, <laughs> no. <laughs> and he came to set. He, he was the, the poutiest, frowniest young man you could was, ever imagine. I held it together. I was just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. And everybody was in on this joke. And everybody kept it going. And we kept it going for so long that the crew started to believe that we were going to have him in this Beatles wig the whole time. And we actually have one take of him in the Beatles wig. Yeah. And I finally said, Bailey, take off that fucking wig. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And now he will never shave his head before a movie lesson. again. Yeah. There you go. Does that question answer your question? There? Yeah. I don't know. Can I just... Right there? I would just like to add one thing. Well, we had we had no time at all to 
to get to know each other. No. We had uh, the table read wasn't until a week in that we had that we had been shooting pretty much. Dragging so, that bag across <laughs> Nova Scotia. So we didn't really we didn't really hang out at all no. until we started shooting. Acting. Acting. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Not that you don't look nice tonight. Yes. Thank you. Okay, the bird, the bird in the kitchen. My answers are all gonna be really bad because my answers don't have to do with like why it's in the movie. My answer is my mom had one and so I put it in a play. <laughs> Sometimes it's that simple. I think we have time for one more. Oh, she has a second part oh, to her okay, question. Okay, sorry. What were the challenges of directing the movie? Ooh. Uh, you know, it actually was the most pleasurable film set I've ever been on in my life. And there, was, there were literally no jerks. Like there's always some jerks and it trickles out really fast, right? Somebody's unhappy and everybody gets on edge. And on this film, oh, she looks like she's doubting me, but I felt like everybody was really happy. It's not a doubting <laughs> Now, you can imagine sitting in an apple orchard in Nova Scotia in August with the bouquet of the scent of apples everywhere, and you can eat one whenever you want and under the shade of a tree. How stressed could you really be? <laughs> so it was nice. It's a very low budget film. In the showbiz, we say, you know, under three million <laughs> by about two million. <laughs> so that was a challenge. I mean, trying to make a film of scope with such a pittance, but I think it looks nice. Congratulations to you all. all right. Thank, Thank you, you everybody for very, very much.